Hi there, welcome to Bike Talk Racing's Tech Station series on how to's. We are, today we're going to look at how to rip it a chain using the Omni Bene chain tool that is supplied free with all Omni Bene kits that require it. First of all, we're going to take a look at the components that actually go into this tool. We have two main plates that is made up of the tool, and these are used to hold the chain either side in the right place. Very cleverly devised, we have two recessed edges left and right, and they go on the pins either side of the link you're riveting, and they hold it in the right position so gap cannot be too loose or too tight and the chain will be riveted correctly. There is a two little dimples in this side that go on the back of the rivet pin to hold that in place. We have two of these brackets that hold the chain square top to bottom in there. We have a pin for holding the plate that goes on the rivet link. We have the two main fastening bolts and we have the riveting stud with a hardened ball bearing in the top that flares the link. So obviously to do this we're going to need some equipment. You are going to need a 5mm allen key, a 6mm allen key, if you're doing it on a bike, 17mm spanner on the back of there. We recommend the use of the gloves because the chain is greasy. You need a chain. Obviously, we're not going to use a complete chain because we're on a bench. So we have some pre cut here that we're going to use. And you're going to need your link. So let's get started then. Get the tools out of the way. You're going to need your chain that you're riveting. You're going to use this pre cut, obviously, on the bike, only be on the bike. And your link. This is an O-ring chain. Normally, you put your two O-rings on the pin and you look a bit of grease, and then the two O-rings go on the other side with a bit of grease. But for this purpose, we're gonna just not use it. So to start off with, we're gonna take the wider piece and the link pin and set that up first. There are two larger holes with threads in them. Your pin plate goes in there. Turn it over. You take the plate of your link Clip it on the top, and then you put your two O-rings with a little bit of grease on there. We can set that for one side. Next is going to be the back of the rivet link and the chain. To help hold everything in place, we're going to use one of these stabilising pins. Our link is now in the right place at the right height. We take the link, obviously having put the grease on it, simply slide it through the chain. Next we need the piece that has got the T on it with a spanner portion for holding it still on the bike. That sits on the back of this plate like that. There's two little divoted holes in there that help you locate the pin. Take your other plate, drop it straight on the top for now. Bring back in your larger plate sits over the side and you see everything starts to line up. So your two longer bolts now through the top, through your locking plate and start screwing it into the back plate. Before we go too far we'll do the same again with the bottom. Obviously we can turn this round so we're going to to make life easier for ourselves. Using the 5mm iron key, wind down the plate bolts. Try and do them fairly evenly and then you prevent any twist within the chain. Be 
you can see how the recesses are then holding against the pins that will stop this being too tight and your rivet link will be tightened to the correct pressure. So you wind those down until they stop. And you'll notice that the pin plate is now free. See what's happening here. The chain has, the rivet link has been on the rest of the rivet. The plates are holding against the pins and the chain is now the correct width all the way along, including the joining link, preventing any tight links. All that's left to do now is use the hardened bolt to flare the links. So we should do this now. Simply wind it in the larger threaded holes where your plate has just come off. Take your 6mm Allen key. I recommend putting a spanner on the back of this on the chain and wind down to flare the link. Once tight, unwind. Have a quick look to see if it's flared enough or not. And do it in the second one. So now having rounded this down to the bottom flat piece, you can simply unwind it all and take the plate off. You will need to push on a considerable piece of pressure to make sure it's flared, but you do not need to go crazy. All you are looking to do when riveting the link is spread the hollow ends of the pin to be wider than the hole that they've just gone through, not to be totally flat against the actual plate itself. All stress on the chain is passed longitudinally through its movement, not left to right, assuming you have all your chains and sprockets in line. So let's deconstruct the tool, check our link. And there we have a perfectly riveted link in the chain. The pins are wider than the holes they've gone in. They've been flared. Have a quick inspection. There is no cracking, no splitting. You can see that the link is the same width as the rest of the chain. That is a good riveted link. And that will last you a long time in your Omnibene chain with proper lubrication. Thank you for watching.